Um, welcome, my name is Paula Groman and I am a study advisor here at the Faculty of Economics and Business. Um, we are very happy to have you here today and um, you can use the Q&A button at the lower part to answer, uh, to ask us all your questions um, during the presentations already and then after the presentation session we will answer the questions and we will start with the ones who got the most likes. So please uh, make sure that you look, use the like function as well so you can get uh, the most out of the session. I think maybe now we can uh, start the session. I will give the word to uh, uh, Silvia um, Dominguez Martinez, our great program director. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, always uh, a bit difficult to find the mute, the unmute button. Yes, I know um, the feeling. <laughs> so welcome to you all, although I cannot see you. Great that you decided to join our uh, information meeting. And let me first start by giving you an idea about what you can expect today. So I will give you an overview of the program and I will try to convince you that economics and business economics uh, should be studied at the University of Amsterdam. And we will have experiences from students because I think that when making a choice for a program, experiences from students are very important. And uh, as Paula was already saying, uh, I'm not doing this alone and I'm super happy that I have many people helping me out. Uh, so we have, of course, Paula, who is our moderator of today. Hello again. Then we have uh, people from uh, admissions, uh, Naomi. Hello. And Yolanda. Hi. And we have uh, uh, the study advisors. Uh, so Paula is one of them. And uh, then uh, Danny. Hi. And Alain. Hello. And uh, of course, the most important uh, part of our, of our presentation are our students. Uh, we have uh, Jan. Hello. And uh, Pisita. Hi, everybody. Great. So um, then you know the team and uh, they will have their place uh, throughout the presentation. So uh, I will go now to give you an overview of the program. Um, yes, there's too many things. Uh, I'm not very good in multitasking. So uh, the program, it's a very standard program. So it's a bachelor program. And uh, that means that it is three years uh, in total, six semesters. So what we have here is you can see that the program consists of one and a half years, which are the same for everyone. So that's basically year one and the first semester of year two. And then at the end of the first semester of year two, you choose a major program. So either you choose the major in economics or the major in business economics. A very nice benefit of this structure is that you can postpone your choice between economics and business economics until the end of the first semester of year two. And this might be very beneficial because some of you might not have a great idea about whether they like economics or business economics more. And by experiencing different courses in the first one and a half year, you can gain experience with the different courses and you can get a better idea about what your interests are. The other benefit of postponing the choice for economics or business economics until the end of the uh, first semester of year two is that you get a very broad knowledge in both economics and business economics. And this will turn out to be very useful when you go into the labor market because there you will be working with people from many different disciplines so having a broad knowledge will be useful to facilitate communicating with other people in the workplace but let's move just to the first year because that's i think the the most the, well the first uh, step in our program so the first year consists of two semesters and each semester consists of three periods. And this is very common throughout uh, the structure of the bachelor program. So each year consists of basically, each semester, sorry, consists of two large blocks. So that's period one and period two and a small block, which is period three. 
So what do I mean with large and small blocks? So period one and two are periods of eight weeks, while period three is a small block of four weeks. And what can you expect in our program? So in our program, you get courses in economics. This is microeconomics one and macroeconomics one. You get courses in business economics. This is financial accounting one, economics of markets and organizations and um, finance. And you get analytical and statistical background, and that's math one and statistics one. If you look at the small blocks, then what is in these small blocks? So in these small blocks, there is skill courses. So in the first semester, the principles of economics and business two is a course where you get trained in academic skills. And in the second semester, you get trained in research skills. If you compare our program to other economics programs, then you will see that there is not so much difference. So you always require a specific level of micro and macro of business economics, and there will be a mathematics and statistics. So there we, there's not so much variation in programs. Perhaps one point at which we differ is that we have this principles of economics and business one course, which is already in the first semester. During this course, you get exposed to the most important theories in economics and business economics. You write essays and you read seminal papers in this area. Furthermore, you are exposed already to guest lectures, which is very important also within an education to see what people in the field or in academics have to say about the topics that are relevant. So the key, the principles of economics and business. For the rest, most of the courses you will see also in other programs. Then let's move to the second year. So in the second year, as I mentioned earlier, you choose your major. So you do this at the end of the first semester. So the first semester is still common for everyone. And then at the end of the first semester, you choose either the major in economics or the major in business economics. If you choose the major in economics, then you get additional courses that are related to economics and you get some more math and uh, game theory. If you choose business economics, then you get courses that are advanced courses in business economics, finance, management, accounting and strategy. And in the end, in both majors, you get some additional research skills. Again, what is important is that you can postpone your choice until the second year, uh, the, the, sorry, the second year. Yeah. And then in the third year, yeah, you can follow your interests. So the first semester is completely free for you to design. So what do I mean with this? So what are the options for the first semester? So in the first semester, you can choose to do either an internship, you can study abroad, or you can do a minor. So let's start with the internship. So if you choose to do an internship, then you go to a company and you apply the knowledge that you have acquired during your education to a business problem within this company. So very, you acquire very practical knowledge. You can also choose to study abroad. So at the moment, this is all a bit uh, problematic, but I hope that by the time that you get to the third year, this will be a feasible option again. And basically what you go is you go to a partner university and you study a semester there. So you get exposed to an other educational system and to a different culture. And the University of Amsterdam has many partner universities all over the world. So there's always a place, you can always find a place where you can explore a new environment. And the last option, that's to do a minor. So a minor is a structured program. And the idea is that you use this to broaden your knowledge. And some students remain relatively close to economics. And they, for example, do a minor in sustainability and economics. But other students have very broad interests and they want to use this semester to explore some of the other interests they have. So other minors that you can take 
are, for example, in art history, which is very far away from economics. But if this is something that interests you, you can use your first semester to explore this, explore this for further. So important uh, to notice is that the first semester you can design yourself. So you can choose what fits best with your interests. And then in the second semester, you fo follow courses from your specialization. But let's say something more about what economics and business economics exactly means. And let me start with the major in economics. So when we think about economics, then we think about the use and allocation of scarce alternative applicable resources. We think about decisions of individuals on the scarcity, but also of countries and what this means for economic policy. Broadly, within economics, we distinguish two fields, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Let me give you an example that was very big in the news. So Brexit, January 1st, the UK left the European Union. Well, basically they already left last year, but the last year they had this transition period where they still had to follow the regulations of the EU. And one of these regulations of the EU is that there is free trade between member states. As soon as the UK leaves the EU, this means that this free trade is not longer there. And then trade agreements are very important. Until very late in December, they were still arguing about what the trade, trade agreements should be. And it was not very clear whether they would be able to reach an agreement before the UK definitely left the EU. So why are these trade agreements very important? Now, if you think about as an individual, so you perhaps buy something at a web shop, what does it mean that the UK is no longer part of the EU? Well, it means that you might have to pay import tariffs. This makes your product more expensive and therefore you might choose not to buy it. But also for firms, this has consequences. So if I'm a Dutch company that exports a lot of products to the UK, then if UK citizens now have to pay import tariffs, then my product becomes more expensive for them. And this will mean that some of them will choose not to buy it. So these trade agreements are very important because it determines what the consequences are of Brexit for both UK companies and EU companies. And uh, it's difficult to already determine what the consequences will be, but in the future, it, it is an interesting field to investigate what, what the consequences have been for the, for the EU companies, but also for UK companies of this Brexit. But a takeaway, so if you think about economics, then one important question is, so what trade agreements, what are the consequences of trade agreements and how do these trade agreements affect the import and export of products within companies or countries? When we think about business economics, then it's mostly about decisions of firms. Think about investment decisions, but also how to get the right information and how to measure this and how to organize a firm or how to motivate employees. Within business economics, we distinguish three specializations, finance, accounting and control, and organizational economics. And let me use Brexit again as an example for business economics. So when we think about the consequences of Brexit for business economics, then we often think about firm decisions. And one important firm decision is what to do after Brexit. So if now you are based in the EU, but you have a lot of business with the UK, should you relocate your business to the UK or should you remain in the EU company, in an EU, in an EU country? So what we have seen last year is that uh, some companies decided to move to the EU. So for example, Sony announced to move the headquarters, the European headquarters to the EU, but Unilay, for example, decided to move their or announced to move their headquarters to 
the UK. So one reason that companies might have to move their headquarters to the UK is that if they are in the UK, then they can use the financial markets or then they are, they have better, um, they can get easier to the financial markets of the UK. Furthermore, they can be listed at the London Exchange. And having these opportunities might be an important reason for multinationals to move their headquarters to the UK instead of having them in the EU labor, in the EU company, countries. So again, Brexit can have important consequences and can be very relevant when thinking about decisions of firms and mostly about location decisions of firms. Then um, let me say something about the career perspectives. Within the, business, the Bachelor in Business Economics, in Economics and Business Economics, you get a solid training in Economics and Business Economics. And the career perspectives are very good. So we see our students, so most of our students at the end of the bachelor program, they choose to go and do a master. I think that from a Dutch perspective, this is the traditional way to go. And it is changing a bit in the sense that we see much more students choosing to go into the labor market after the bachelor program. And where do they end? So in which type of jobs? And then it is very broad. So think about any big firm or any big bank, they will need a good economist. And so we see our students everywhere. So we see them in banks, but also in consultancy, we see many of our students, government institutions, and some start their own company and some end up in university. So we have students everywhere. So some of the organizations where we have alumni are in the Dutch Central Bank, the big banks in the Netherlands, uh, the big consultancy firms, ministries. So everywhere we have alumni walking around. So I think that economics and business economics is a field that gives very good career perspectives. And the students from our bachelor program uh, end up in very nice jobs with good perspectives. So I think that in terms of career perspectives, this bachelor program offers great opportunities. And um, now I will give the word back to Paula and uh, she will introduce our students. Um, so. Hello again, and thank you, Sylvia, for the um, really uh, great presentation. Um, I'm really happy now, and it's an honor to um, uh, yeah, present our students to you, because I think for you, this is maybe one of the most valuable parts that you hear firsthand how it is like to study at our faculty. I will first give the word to Pisita, and she will tell her more about her rationale um, for choosing for this program. Yes, thank you very much, Paula. Um, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, I should start right away, right, Paula? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I, uh, my name is Pisita again. I am a third year economics and business economics student. I was born and raised in Indonesia. So I am indeed a long way from home. And I'm sure some of you who are also from Asia, uh, we're going to be a long way from home. But before I start, I think it would be useful for me to talk a little bit about um, why I chose to go to UBA. So all my life, I've always wanted that I wanted to study something related to mathematics. So right after high school, I enrolled myself to a mathematic bachelor program here in the Netherlands, but not at the UBA. But not long after that, I realized that because it is located in a smaller city compared to Amsterdam, I was just not feeling the vibe that I wanted to. I obviously grew up in uh, I grew up in Jakarta, a very busy and big city, and then moving to a small rural city was a bit of an issue for me. I feel like life wasn't moving as fast um, for me. So then my search for a better uh, study place began. At that point, I knew because the, my issue was mainly about the city, I wanted to study somewhere in the Randstad, so either Rotterdam or Amsterdam. And I also, at that point, because um, I quit something, I just wasn't sure what is it that I wanted to study. So uh, for me, flexibility was a very big priority. If I want to study anywhere, 
somewhere it has to give me a lot of choices a lot of room to move around and then I learned about the EVE at the UVA which like Sylvia said earlier you don't actually have to make make um, the important decision until um, sort of the second year and your third year uh, right now I am doing the business economics track um, and specializing in finance which frankly it's great I I really like it it's exactly where I want to be but also studying the EBE program gives me the a plenty of choice to do other things for example last year last semester actually I did a minor in business administration managing strategy and marketing because I do have um, a lot of interest to do marketing and all that and I also feel like the program is great because I get to see people like Jan, for example, people from Europe, people from Asia, America, and every part of the world. And uh, I think my goal in life is to have a pretty international career and having being challenged to adapt and to utilize with what I have and the people around me is a very important skill. But besides that, I think the important thing to also po be pointed out is the fact that there are plenty of student and study um, associations around the program. So frankly in the first year when I didn't have that many friends yet um, I can just join events and see meet people and all that and it would help me with my homesickness uh, at the moment I am still uh, active in one of the st student association it's called the UNICEF student team Amsterdam I am still volunteering there but I'm also a teaching assistant so I am doing a part-time job right now at the UVA uh, I'm teaching first year course at the moment so who knows maybe next year I will see some of you or the year afterwards um, I think as a remark Amsterdam as a city and um, is a really nice place especially if you want this global and vibrant environment but don't get me wrong the bachelor is challenging it requires commitment you need to be organized and you need to stay on top of your work but frankly, don't worry about it too much because somehow, some way, once you start, the ball just roll and it gets easier um, as you go. Um, and now I think Jan will take over and say his piece of the story. Uh, thank you, Pisita. Uh, so hello, uh, my name is Jan. I'm from Slovakia. That's where I'm currently also calling from. I'm a third year business economics student specializing in accountancy and control. Uh, I have completed a minor in sustainability and economics, and I'm also following the honors program. And I'll try to tell you a bit more about how do I experience online education. Uh, and I'll also give you some, some advice to you as prospective students uh, that you might be interested in. So firstly, how does my online education look? Uh, so when it comes to the lectures, most of them are live. And by live, I mean live in, in, in an online sense. Um, and the professors are really trying hard to make the lectures interesting and engaging. Uh, some of them use engaging platforms, they encourage questions and are very keen to answer them uh, because at the end of the day, uh, the professors and the teachers, they are there for you uh, and you can really feel it. And it's a great feeling to have uh, as a student. Um, and this gives you a lot of opportunities to interact with the professors, which are, by the way, very knowledgeable on the, on the subjects they're lecturing on. Um, even even in the online setting. Um, another great benefit of having online lectures uh, means that it is very easy to have a guest lecturer uh, present. Uh, and it is something that some of my minor classes and my honors program classes have taken advantage of in the last half a year. Uh, and it's been great speaking with experts from the related fields. Um, it's just really amazing to be having that touch of reality which we so desperately need uh, in these times. Uh, and when it comes to the high level of engagement, I would say that the same applies to the seminars and tutorials uh, where there's a lot of interactive work. There's usually breakout rooms almost in every class that I've had so far um, where you get engaged with some tasks um, and perhaps even, norm even more than you would normally do. Uh, and that's to ensure that you understand the content and that you feel connected to the class and cooperate with the classmates. And there's also various individual and group assignments present as part of the class. Uh, which kind of are pushing me to stay on track with studying and engage with, uh, with the classmates, as I mentioned. And in general, I can really feel that the school cares about the students. Um, and I can feel it by, by the approach of the teachers and professors. You're going to feel it as first year students who will have your who you, and you'll have your study advisors who are people whom you can approach with whatever questions you have, concerns, uh, 
and basically a great person to um, to ask at any time uh, if there's something you're unsure about or if you're struggling. Um, and also the university is trying to find out how the students are coping uh, during online education. They're sending out a lot of questionnaires and a lot of tips on how to cope uh, and basically promote well-being in these times. Um, so it's great to feel that effort from the side of the university. Um, and how do I experience it all? Um, well, of course, I'd be lying if I said that I'm not missing my classmates an awful lot and that I don't miss the real touch, the routine and the events. Um, and that's simply because Amsterdam in general, but also Yuva, is a great place for live studies. Um, it has a lot of things going on, whether it's in-school discussions with world-class guests, um, many career events, student associations, clubs, and even details such as cultural life with stand-ups happening on campus. Um, I hope that you get to experience that as soon as possible. Um, but quite frankly, I feel like there is this narrative that if, if the education is online, uh, it means that it's bad. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily true uh, because I really got used to the online education and I started liking the online experience because there definitely are some positives to it. Um, some of the positives are that I have way more freedom, uh, even more freedom than I would normally do during classic uh, university studies. I have more time on my hands and uh, I was definitely taught, I definitely learned uh, how to improve my time management, uh, my self-discipline but also my self-awareness um, as there is currently pretty much nothing, just my computer screen pushing me to do the work. And I had to figure out what works for me uh, so I can stay in a productive and a happy flow. And I'll admit the first months were quite slow, um, but then I realized that uh, my need is that I have to be busy and keep myself occupied with multiple projects. So I took up multiple activities as a result. And currently I have an internship uh, and besides a couple small other projects, I'm, I've also developed some new hobbies. I have way more time for cycling, uh, which is one of the best things that happened to me during the last year, I need to say. And I've also gotten more time to uh, explore the nature and my surroundings more. Uh, and even though I've lived in the place where I'm living right now for 22 years, uh, to be quite honest, I haven't really explored it as much as I have right now because I, just, I was just pushed to uh, exit my room and go outside. Um, and as I said, currently I'm at, uh, I'm at home in Slovakia, um, which is quite an unusual university life, I'll admit, but for me, this is not so bad as it may sound, um, because I have time to spend with my family, my parents, my sisters. Uh, I also have two nephews and a niece, um, and I've spent a couple of years abroad, living away from home. Uh, and it's just great to be spending time at home because I know that I likely won't be spending much time at home in the future either. Um, and of course, this was perhaps more enjoyable in the first month than it is now. Um, who knows, when things get back into normal, we won't have the opportunities we have now. Uh, and that's something to think about. Uh, that's to make the most out of the current situation. And instead of seeing it as a problem, uh, identifying opportunities in it. Which brings me to my first piece of advice. And that is, uh, I would urge to ask you, what do you want to take out of the three years if you're going to be only completing a bachelor study? Uh, at Yuva, uh, whether they're going to be in person or some of them are going to be online. How can you make the most out of them? My second piece of advice would be uh, when at university or in school generally, and especially right now when everything is online, um, one can become lazy and work for the MVP. That's the minimum viable product. Uh, I want you to remember that you're studying for yourself, uh, not for the grades, nor the professors. Uh, and not because the assignments are pushing you. The knowledge is important. So seek opportunities outside of the classroom too um, and realize that you're doing it for yourself uh, and stay motivated like that. And lastly, um, I would say find out and try to experiment with what works for you. Try to identify what are your needs and how do you get into a productive, happy and sustainable flow. Um, you need to know yourself, which is a very useful skill for, for life in general. Uh, and I suppose that you're already quite familiar with online education at this point. However, studying at university makes you closer to your after school or career life, uh, which feels different and feels a tad more serious. Um, so, so that's what I have to say. Um, I'll give the word back to Pisita because she also has some advice for you. Well, thank you, Jan. Actually, I think I only have one advice. So as you've heard, I actually switched my um, program after a year. And right now you're choosing which program you want to go to, which university, which city you want to live in. And to be honest, there will always be a little bit worry inside of you, but there is no 
bad thing about just making a choice. Don't, don't be afraid to make a wrong choice. For me, that one year was, I, I, I lost a year. I lost a year to a program that I didn't want to study. But at the end, I learned that, you know what? I'm more resilient than I thought I am. So just go for it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. And now I'll give the floor back to, uh, to Paula. Thank you so much, Pisita and Jan, for your inspiring stories. I think, uh, yeah, I very much hope that uh, for our audience that you all got something or a lot out of it because uh, I think this is the best way and that can actually help you to make your choice and you even got away along uh, advice along on the way. Um, now that yeah, you heard from both our inspiring students and our dedicated program director, um, I would like to even help you further to make your choice uh, to let me sum up the advantages of studying economics and business economics at our faculty. First of all, we have a challenging and interesting program that provides you with excellent chances on the job market. Then, as uh, Sylvia explained, you have quite some freedom to choose and um, can even make the program your own. Like in the first semester of year three, you can choose whether you want to go on exchange or do an internship or do a minor. And there's a lot of potential and many really fascinating options at the UVA available. Then our university and also our faculty in particular has an excellent international reputation. And we have more than 90 different nation nationalities on campus, both in terms of teacher, teaching staff and also in terms of students. And that's one of the things I really love uh, of, about our university. And um, I think for you, that's also really great because it also prepares you for the international job market. In sum, we offer an inspiring education and that will prepare you in an excellent way um, for your future career. And if that sounds appealing to you, um, let me uh, tell you a bit more about the next steps. Um, if we can continue to the next slide, uh, please. Um, so, um, the next steps is actually it's really great that you are here today um, because this is a great chance to see whether the program is the right match for you. But I would like to encourage you to delve even deeper into the program, explore the open house page and all the information that is available online. I will actually share share. Um, I already prepared it. I will or I will share some links in a minute with you in the chat. Um, these are really useful links to the open house, to our program page, and also to the admissions page where you can find a lot of information. Um, then I would like to encourage you to register for the online experience days that will take place in April, because that is a really great chance to experience firsthand how education um, looks like at our faculty. So you can follow one lecture and one seminar online. And registration is not open yet, but it will be open uh, starting from next uh, week and uh, you can see the link in the chat via the open house page you can actually register and then the last step of course is apply on time before April 1st or April May depending on where you are coming from and we very much hope to see many of you again in September 21 or 22 depending on when yeah on your situation um, I will now uh, share some links in the chat with you maybe I can uh, this is the part uh, oh one more thing. Oh, yes. Um, one more thing I wanted to um, uh, tell you or like show you is there is actually a lot. Jan, our student, already mentioned it. Um, there is actually a lot of support available at our faculty in terms of study advisors uh, and tutors. And uh, we also have a social mentor program for first year students where you have older students um, uh, in separate groups with other students. Uh, so you can actually have the chance also online to meet fellow students and discuss things that, uh, that are relevant for the first year. Then there are a lot of social activities, there are study associations, and the intro days are actually really great to attend with a lot of interaction and uh, um, potential to meet the staff. Um, there are a lot of workshops and trainings that you can follow in terms of study skills, but also in terms of uh, career prospects. There's actually a lot being organized to um, promote student engagement. And um, also in terms of the online education, we actually even have a hybrid um, learning theater and um, uh, yeah, we are doing everything we can to make also online education as stimulating and as interactive as possible. Um, 
so that was the presentation part um, of our session. Um, I would uh, now like to ask uh, um, yeah, Sylvia, uh, also if you still have questions that you haven't put in the Q&A uh, yet um, to all your attendees, please put all your questions in the Q&A. And we will now start um, by answering the questions. I will just uh, first, <laughs> what I wanted to do before, I now shared all the links in the chat. And um, there you can find the link for the Open House website, where you can also find the recording of the session and you can register for the experience days and also some other useful links. You can find them now in the chat. Um, okay, but now finally the Q&A. Um, let me start by, um, <clears throat> With the first question, I see uh, that Jan is already typing an answer the student. Maybe we can answer that one live. Um, I don't know, Jan and Sylvia, maybe you can do it together. What would you say is the main difference between this program and business administration program? Sylvia already yeah, mentioned it during the presentation, but we do get that question a lot. So I think it's maybe nice to say something uh, plenary. Shall I take the first uh, and then Jan can... Uh... At. I um, I thought I uh, I included the slide. Oh yes, uh, it was at the end. So, yeah, so we get this question quite a bit, uh, also with other programs, but this one is uh, perhaps the one that we get most. Yeah. So what the main difference is, especially between let's say business administration and business economics, is that they look or basically the the same thing is that they look at problems within businesses, so within firms. What is different is perhaps the approach. So at business administration, it's multidisciplinary. So they look uh, at psychology, they look at soci uh, sociology, uh, law, um, management. Uh, so it's much more broad than uh, with business economics, where of course we also care about other disciplines, but we also like to delve into what the potential problems are. So it's much more focused on uh, economics and uh, financial problems within firms. Uh, so in that respect, it is a matter of taste. Uh, we share two specializations, but uh, basically it, it depends a bit on what you, what you want to do. And perhaps Jan can add something to this. Yeah. I think Sylvia, I think you pretty much explained it perfectly for what I would just say. Um, what I would just add is um, that the that it's also possible to basically end up specializing in the same specialization and basically end up in the same field, uh, whether you're starting with business administration or uh, business economics. Um, but I, for example, like business economics more. That's why I went for it, because it gives the gives you the analytical background a bit more. It just frame the it frames your thinking uh, in a slightly different way, something that's closer to me. Uh, and it gives you those analytical hard skills, so to say. That's what I would say is the benefit of uh, business economics for me. Thanks a lot, Jan. Um, Pisita would like to add something as well. And uh, so I give the word floor to Pisita. Uh, yes, maybe just a quick one because my major is in economics and business economics and my minor is in business administration. So technically I've had a little bit of both. The only main difference is I think with business administration, you sort of think about it like you try to solve something with an essay, but in business economics, there's a lot more mathematics involved. It's more numerical, it's more um, quantitative rather than qualitative. So I think that's also a very nice thing. Say. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much for sharing that. I think that helped to um, clarify it. And then we have the second question with the most likes. We have a question from uh, Reshma. Um, do you also arrange um, the campus interviews for jobs in mentioned companies after the completion of the completion of the bachelor program? Um, Sylvia, do you want to say a little bit about that? Or I can also say something maybe about career things. Yeah, I can I can make a start and then you can add uh, to it. So we have a career office, and uh, this career office is uh, very um, uh, active in uh, making contacts with students and uh, business, and they organize different events. Think, for example, of, uh, of looking at CV checks, these type of things, things that are important when going into business life. So um, I. I I must say, I don't think that we arrange uh, campus interviews. So that would mm -hmm. be my uh, my uh, my answer, uh, no. But uh, we have study associations that do many career events 
where you can get in contact with uh, potential uh, companies. And there, there are often opportunities to also have individual uh, chats with these companies. So in that sense, we don't organize uh, company interviews, but there are many opportunities where you can get exposed to companies. And then it is also uh, your uh, responsibility to get to these companies and show yourself. So in that respect, we there are two things that these companies also want to see that the students are independent, that they are active, that they want to uh, have a, a contact with them. So I think that this is also important that we then leave this up to the student. But we have like uh, basic uh, advice, but also help that might be important when going into the job market. And Paula can perhaps add to this. Thank you very much. I think you already gave a perfect answer, actually. Because uh, um, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more actually. And um, just to uh, yeah, to summarize, the career office really offers a lot of uh, useful activities and career skills weeks um, that can really help you with your future career. So we do spend a lot of attention and uh, help you um, with that throughout your studies. Um, then uh, I see that the next questions are already being answered uh, right now. It's funny because I can see that people are writing, but they're also a bit specific about admissions. So I will leave my colleagues to answer those questions. Um, oh, yeah, maybe we can uh, do that one, Jan, if that's OK for you. I can see that you are typing, but there's a question by Hilla. Um, what kind of student clubs or sport teams are available for students to join? Would it be okay, Jan, to answer that live? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so regarding the sports, I just wanted to answer that uh, all the universities in Amsterdam are basically united under the USC. Uh, and while perhaps right now the options are limited, uh, you can find a comprehensive list of the clubs at the USC uh, website. Maybe Paula or maybe I can also post the, uh, the link there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's related to the sports clubs. You can find a lot of uh, a lot of sports. I was surprised by what everything is there. Uh, and once things open up, it's actually really nice. You can buy a uh, um, you can buy different passes that combine different sports and so on. So there is definitely a lot uh, to do. Uh, and the campuses are also great. I can recommend that. There is also Sona in one of them. Um, and when it comes to student clubs, uh, besides sports, for example, uh, at Yuva there is Crea, which is a creative center. Um, and of course, I'm not sure if they're doing many online courses now, but they're, they have art related courses, uh, drama related courses, even impro courses, uh, things like that. That's what I can think of. Uh, and maybe you would also be interested in student associations. Um, in that case, I would recommend that you check out SEFA, for example, S-E-F-A. Um, that's where you can basically group up in different committees and organize various events. So it's kind of like a student club in that regard. Thank you, Jan. I think that was really uh, useful and uh, you summed it up very nicely. Um, uh, so we got that one. I have another quick question by uh, Joel. Is this the bachelor program or like uh, about the kind of program? It's a BSc program, actually, just uh, to let you know. Um, oh, the next one is already being answered. I can see that one as well. Um, let me just check. Um, oh, yeah, uh, we have another question by uh, Kang Chiu. I hope I pronounce your name correctly. I always like to try with international names, um, but uh, don't uh, mind me if I didn't. Um, hi, will I be able to take psychology or computer science as a minor? Um, oh, I can see that Pisita is answering that one already. Pisita, do you want to say something live about that or shall I uh, say something? Sure, I can say a little bit. Um, Thanks. Just a piece. So yeah, I, I think I, I knew this uh, from from I think one of the bachelor day, but UVA has the widest uh, range of minor available in the whole um, Netherlands. So um, the minor can range something that is close to our studies. So for example, like what me and Jan did, we did something in the Faculty of Economics and Business, but you can also do minor in physics or mathematics, data science or psychology or political science. So the minor is endless, the option of minor, minor is endless. And also every year there is this contest where you can participate and create your own minor. So if you're lucky, maybe your minor can get approved and then it will become a minor that you can follow eventually. So yeah, I think you can do whatever minor you want to do. 
Yeah, can I add, uh, let course. me add something to this? Because uh, I completely correct, uh, Pisita, it's even broader. Uh, you could also do a, a minor at another faculty. So uh, you can, uh, in the, but also at another university. So you, uh, in, in that respect, you can do, uh, so the, the, the requirements for a minor is that it is something that doesn't conflict or that you didn't get in your uh, bachelor program. So we have students that also choose to do a minor at uh, the free university. Some do it at the Erasmus University in Rotterdam. So in principle, it is really, you have quite a bit of freedom about picking your minor program. So if this is at another faculty, then this is also, there are opportunities for this. So it's, uh, it's broad what you can do. Uh, and broad is nice. And some students find this scary because it implies choices. But uh, you have quite a bit of opportunities in the first semester to really uh, implement it as it fits your interest best. Thank you very much, Sylvia and uh, Pisita. Um, I, I have another question that we also get um, often during these kind, uh, kind of events. And I see that uh, uh, Yolanda already said she wants to answer it, uh, yeah, that we should discuss that plenary. So we will do that. Um, how is the UBA's econ program different from econ programs in other Dutch uh, faculties? Shall I try? Take yeah, I hint? think. Yeah, I think maybe for you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So in principle, um, just to be uh, fair about this, if you look at econ programs in uh, econ and business economics programs in Dutch universities, then you will see that these programs all have a very similar structure because you have to get a basic math, you get a, have to get basic statistics. You have to get basic research skills and basic economics and business economics. So for these courses, there are no differences. If we look within our program, perhaps some things that might really um, differentiate us from other programs is that already in the first year, you will really start uh, having these, uh, writing these essays, working on your academic skills. And that in the, sec in the third year, we really have this semester where you don't have anything. So you can really design it as you want. So it's not that you have to still take a course. No, it's really you have like a complete semester that you can design on your own. So this would I would differentiate. But in terms of, of content, uh, yeah, it's often just a, a feeling that you have with a university in terms of content. There will be not huge differences because all economics and business economics have a bit of a, a curriculum that is fixed. And then we have some things that vary. Thank you very much. I think that was an excellent uh, summary. Um, we have one more question um, from Kri as well. Is UVA in this program well recognized in Ivy League grad school admissions? Yolanda, you marked it, but I'm not sure if you want to answer it or if you want Sylvia to say something about it. I can say something otherwise. Yes, yeah, Sylvia can uh, say something about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't. No, in the sense that Ivy League grad schools are very uh, specific in terms of uh, what they um, what they admit as uh, recognized and what not. And um, um, what I see, uh, so this is more experience, is that uh, if I look at US, that they are a bit reluctant to Europe in the sense that they don't uh, know what the quality is of our programs, so they don't want to invest in getting this information. And uh, therefore they often very quickly say, okay, uh, this is something that we don't want even to consider. Uh, but uh, this being said, so we, if we just look at the objective um, uh, ranking, so UVA is very well ranked on the international uh, rankings as a university. And if I look at our graduates, we have uh, many graduates that get into master programs at the LSE, which is one of the top universities in uh, Europe. So uh, it is not that uh, that it is. Uh, so I, 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 I think it's a bit like that these universities are a bit more uh, picky in terms of what they want to recognize and what not. So in that sense, I don't know, but we are well recognized. We have a good ranking. And uh, also, we do see that our bachelor students end up in very good master programs of top institutes at, uh, at the, at, in Europe. So that would be my answer. 
Thank you so much. And um, I just wanted to read something out loud, which I just saw. Um, and I very much appreciate uh, Colin said that he doesn't have a question, but he would just like to thank us all very much for the webinars that it really helps. Thank you, Colin. We really, really appreciate uh, your feedback. Um, thanks for that. I thought that made me smile, so I had to share it. Um, the next question is by uh, Sil. Um, if it's possible to start with economics and business economics in September, and uh, then uh, switch to business administration in 22. And if that increases your chance of getting through the selection of business administration, um, that is not, uh, I can answer that one uh, quickly. That is not the case because the business administration has a numerous fixes. So if you already know that you really want to do business administration, uh, it doesn't matter whether you, uh, yeah, you did economics and business economics before, because you will have to do the entry selection uh, test. So um, that's a separate thing, actually. Um, oh, yeah, that one we answered. Um, um, the next question, let me just check. Um, do you have any programming or algorithmic training in the program uh, by Maria? Um, maybe one of our students can say something about that. Because, uh, yeah, perfect, Pisita, thank you. Well, um, I think in general, everybody does a little bit of startup. That's the software that we use, the statistical um, software that we use. But uh, I'm not sure which track actually does this, but in finance, which I, what I'm specializing right now, I will have a course called Introduction to Python next period. So yes, you do learn a little bit of um, programming in that. So maybe Sylvia can fill in the gaps. <laughs> Yeah, great, Pisita. Indeed, so uh, we have it uh, as an um, as an a fixed part of the program for finance and organizational economics, but it is also an uh, elective within uh, economics, um, and we are transitioning towards in towards including this uh, more into the program because we also hear from business life that um, things like Python uh, and some other programming languages like are, are important when transitioning into the labor market. So I think that in the coming years, we will be uh, expanding in terms of uh, uh, these type of courses. Then, uh, so, but it is in the program, uh, so you can choose it, or it is really part of your fixed program, uh, that would be Python. Uh, and the other thing just to add, we also have like a minor in, uh, in data analytics, uh, where you get uh, some programming courses. And uh, you can also what what I see many students do is that they uh, they 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 want to get more experience with programming and they use their free space in the first semester to really follow like a programming minor to really get very uh, much experience into this. But we do offer something during the program. I, I, my intention is to expand this in the coming years because I do think that this is very important and until now many economics programs are lag lagging behind in terms of programming. And this is due to the uh, Dutch structure where we have economics and econometrics separate. So, uh, but uh, I think it is also something that should be in econ and then mostly uh, applied to what you might be seeing later on in your bus in business life. Uh, so very applied uh, program skills. Thank you very much for that. Um, the next question, oh, the one I selected uh, just disappeared, but we have um, one more question. Uh, the specific question about the admissions question, we will not answer plenary, so you will get an answer to that. Oh yeah, the one I found it again. What is the situation with transferring? If the course is not possible for me, will I be able to transfer to any courses in UVA or only to those under the econ and business uh, department from SONA? Um, I can say a little bit about that. Um, it is uh, if for some reason you realize that the program is used after starting is maybe too challenging or not the right match for you, then um, uh, it is possible in theory to uh, transfer to other programs or to other faculties, uh, provided that you fulfill the entry requirements um, of the other programs. So it depends a bit on your previous education. So if you want to transfer to a program where you fulfill the entry requirements for, then it, it is possible. Um, but uh, yeah, just make sure that, uh, that that works. And also if it might be good to know that we also have um, career coaches at our um, university. So in case if that applies to you, or if you need some guidance with that, uh, there's a lot of support available actually. 
And um, we have one more question by Tudor. Um, if possible, could you please further explain how the study abroad option in your third year works and uh, what the countries are we can uh, go to? Um, I can start a bit and Sylvia, feel free to uh, yeah, um, complete uh, my answers. Um, I think my colleague is also already answering that I just noticed, but he will probably share the link because we have on our uh, study abroad website, we have actually a um, global map um, uh, where you can see all the partner universities. And um, I think my colleague will share that now and how it works basically is there is a selection procedure. The deadline is usually uh, in December the year before. And then uh, you get, um, uh, uh, oh, you're already responding. And then uh, you can select your um, preference. And um, uh, so there is like, a, I think you already received an answer. I can see because you say thank you very much in the chat. Um, the, um, but uh, what is good to know is that for second year students, we always organize um, information sessions where all your third year options are explained and you get uh, guidance and help with that. Um, I can see that there are no further open questions. Um, I would like to thank everyone very much uh, for attending and also thanks uh, to our students and the rest of the team. Um, Sylvia, would you like to um, say maybe some concluding words? Yeah, no, well, thanks and uh, good luck with making your choice. I think it's uh, a lot of information. So uh, on the website, we also have some uh, videos where you can see uh, uh, a bit more. Uh, so this will this video will be also posted there so you can go through it again. Uh, I think uh, choose something that you really that has your interest. So if today you had the idea that these are topics that I like to hear more about, then this is a way to go and uh, this would then be a good study for you. And uh, just um, also we will have like these experience days. I think this gives an additional uh, way of seeing what you can expect in terms of um, what, what education is at our program, but also another topic uh, about what, what economics is about. And uh, the topic is normally about returns to education. So you can get additional information about what, you, uh, what your returns are of getting an education. And uh, I think it's uh, very useful to get as much information as possible. And then uh, if you decide to come to our program, then we are very welcome. We would be very welcome to welcome you here either in September already or somewhere in the future. And good luck with making uh, your choice. And thank you for attending the webinar. <laughs>